Hey guys, welcome back to the Whimsical Workshop. In this video, I'm going to tackle the Creative Grid Spiderweb Ruler and figure out how this guy works. So let's get started. <laughs> Doodles is joining us this afternoon. <laughs> She's grown so big. Say hi, Miss Doodles. This, this is Doodles approved. So I've had this spider web ruler on my cutting table for a couple months now and I really want to know how it works. And to be honest, I'm a little intimidated to start because there's a lot of instruction. Um, but unless I start, I'll never figure it out. And if you've been following along in my videos a couple weeks ago, I did a ruler review of the, well I wouldn't say it was a review, I figured out how to use the Creative Grids Kaleidoscope and Dress and Plate Ruler. Um, because these two rulers are very, very similar, and I do have a quilt that is a kaleidoscope block, and I'm not sure which ruler I want to recommend or use with that block, so I needed to know how to use both of them. Um, I will link the kaleidoscope Dresden plate ruler video below. Check that one out. It was really fun to figure it out, and I think you guys enjoyed coming along on that ride as well. Um, and it was very, very easy and very straightforward to use. So, moving on to the spider web ruler. Um, on this ruler, these are the four blocks they're showing that we can make with this ruler. Plus, it says on the inside, if you go to their website, which is creativegridsusa.com, um, they have other block choice, additional designs that utilize the ruler. So we will definitely check that out on our own. Um, but just so you know, there's more than four blocks that we can do with this. Um, there, the ruler cuts three different shapes, the triangle, the kite, and the polygon for the background. All the blocks shown above are, are using a variety of up to three shapes, and they're referring to these. Alright, so what I'm going to do, because I have never used this ruler, is I'm going to go through each section with you. So we've got triangles, kites, background, then it shows you how to make a kaleidoscope block. That's what we need for that one. Um, and then it gives you actually the sewing instructions for a kaleidoscope block, a spider web, and a four pointed star block. So we're going to go through all of those. Down here, there is a size chart. It tells you the triangles yield based on 42 inch strip. So if you um, are cutting three inch strip, you can get 24 triangles. If you cut a three and a half inch strip, you can get 20 triangles. This is super handy. Super, super handy for me because I'm usually trying to figure out yardages. I'm going to bring this up so you can see it a little better. Then over here it tells you the kite, kite square size you need to cut, the tri size you need to cut, and the max you're going to get out of a strip. Um, and I'm assuming tri is triangle. And then the same thing over here, triangle size, spider web size. And okay, so this is approximate block size. Four, four blocks are necessary to form one spider web block. So approximate block size. Hmm. I'm not sure I understand what that is. Maybe it's telling me, okay, so it, oh, I got, well, is that what it's telling me? Triangle size is three inch, spider web size is four inch, kaleidoscope size is 5.5 inch. I'm not really sure what that chart is. It may come clearer once we get going. So let me start at the beginning. Um, for the demo today, I decided we would go super citrus. To do the triangle shape, you use this for the spider web, the four pointed star, and the kaleidoscope. Cut the triangle shape. Choose up to 15 strip widths from 3 inches to 10 inches. I picked three and a half. Uh, cut the strip of fabric or sew the strips together to create a strata equal, which means I could sew three one and a half inch strips to get a three and a half inch strip. And so I'd have like little skinny bars on my block, but we're just going to go with solid fabric right now. Cut a strip of fabric. Da, 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 da. Align the horizontal measurement. All right, so let's, let's do this. Because again, I don't know what we're going to need these shapes for, but what the heck. Go big or go home, right? All right, so I'm just going to layer these up so when I cut, I'm getting three of each, one of each color or three triangles. And I'm going to get rid of the seam allowance at the end. Or, sorry, it's, it's a Friday night. I'm going to get rid of the uh, salvage at the end. And then I'm going to take the ruler and it says to align the measurement. 
So I have a three and a half inch strip. So let's make sure I'm pointing to the right line. Cut, do, do, do. place the ruler on top of the fabric as far left as possible, and then align the horizontal measurement on the ruler with the bottom of the fabric. And the tiny black triangle at the top should be at the top of your strip. Rotate, okay, so then you cut, rotate, cut, you rotate. So we know we have three and a half inch strips. It's on the three and a half inch horizontal line. The black triangle is at the top of my strips and we just go ahead and cut. So when you do a kaleidoscope, um, you don't always need to have a point at the top. These blunt edges work really nice. So we got one, then you would flip the ruler over and we've got number two. So this is where that yield chart on the back, this first chart makes sense to me. It tells you if you're gonna cut these triangles, that's how many you get out of a strip. So we got that. So you're going to cut these the same way whether you do a kaleidoscope block or a um, any of these others. I wasn't sure. Sometimes they want you to have that point at the end because um, they're showing the point in the picture, but I don't think that's right because it says refer to triangle, triangle cutting instructions to cut eight triangles for the block. Cut the corner triangles, refer to the course, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that. But okay. And I think anytime you're faced with something that confuses you or um, intimidates you, you just have to break it down into smaller steps. Like this, if you look at the whole thing, this is kind of confusing for me. Um, I will admit I am very much a visual person and not a literal person. And I'm one of those people that look at the pictures and then when I get in trouble, I read the directions. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes instructions are written. Ooh, I got a horrible wave in that fabric. Sometimes instructions are written so that you um, have to do both, and that is the case here because there's a lot of little nuances to these rulers. There's a lot of technology built into them, a lot of um, tips on how to use the pieces. So you really do want to both read the instructions and look at the pictures. And any time that that is a requirement, I'm a little more hesitant to try it, which is very silly, but very true. So, all right, and I'm getting kind of wavy here, so I'm gonna square that up and do it this way. All right, so we have a bunch of these triangles cut. And I think I'll just cut a bunch of each shape as we go, and then we'll piece them at the end. I think that's gonna make the most sense. So those are our triangles. Okay, kites. Kites, a kite shape is used in the spider web block, the four-pointed star. So that one, without the glare, that is a spider web. That's a floating spider web. That's the four pointed star. And again, that's the kaleidoscope block that that's what's in my quilt. So we're going back to the directions. Kites, kites use the shape, blah, blah, blah. To cut the kite shape, refer to the numbers printed in the center of the ruler. The center of the ruler. Let's get a piece of some, oh here, I'll use my sketch pad for you guys. We need some, oh, that's not white, that's not white, there we go. Some white for you. There we go. Now we can all look at this together without the glare of the, um, there we go. All right, so as I hold this up, I will read the directions to both of us. Kite is a ship, blah, blah, blah. The top, okay, look at the, refer to the numbers printed in the center of the ruler. There we go. There's all the center ruler numbers. Um, the top number corresponds with the triangle length and the number directly below is the size of the square necessary to cut one kite shape for that particular size triangle. So we cut three and a half. This is saying the top number, where was that? This is kind of hard to hold this up and read at the same time. The top number corresponds with the triangle length. Okay. That's three and a half. So that's what we cut. The bottom number tells us the size square necessary to cut one kite shape for that triangle. So cut a square that's three and a quarter. Well, good thing we cut these three and a half because now I can cut three and a quarter out of it. 
we're just going to start from the other end. That worked out well. <laughs> On the kaleidoscope ruler, we cut the smallest strip first, and then um, everything else required bigger strips after that. And that was oh, just a waste. All right. So three and a quarter. So let's go ahead and cut one square and see what happens. Three and a quarter. All right. We've got our square. Place the ruler over the top of the square as shown. So the square is on a diagonal. Align the bottom corners of the square with the corresponding measurements on the ruler. All right. Oh, there we go, there we go. So there is, eh, you're probably not gonna see that very well. There's these weird dotted lines. Oops, right there. See the white dotted lines on the camera? All right, so we go to the three and a half and we're gonna align the corner of the square on those dotted lines. And we're gonna make sure, I'm sure that's, they don't say it, but I'm sure this, this diagonal line should go right through the center of that square. And I'm gonna just turn this a little bit, turn that a little bit. My cutting the night is not the best because again, it's a Friday night. I don't know about you guys, but by Friday night, I'm kind of toast. All right. <laughs> is this not three and a half inch square or three and a quarter inch square? Oh, look at that. It is not three and a quarter inch square. When you need a job done, get the right ruler. Yeah, see that? That's three and a half. It was like it just was not working. So if it says three and a quarter square, cut it three and a quarter square. There we go. All right, that's cut. That aside. I don't want to lose all my triangles. I worked so hard to cut. There you go. Let's try this again and see if it works. All right, three and a half on the dotted line. Look at that. Point goes to the corner. We're good. It says whack off these corners. Get to see my chubby arm. There we go. All right, there we go. We have kite shapes. So let's cut a few of those. It's kind of fun. In the end, we're going to have a bunch of puzzle pieces that we can just sort of put together and see what we get. Triangles, kites. Next up. All right. Background. Background polygon shape is used in the floating spider web bat block, which is that guy right there, this one right here. Uh, to cut the background shape, use the square measurement located in the center of the ruler that corresponds with the size. So guess what? They're going to be three and a quarter as well, because that is what we just did. All right. To cut the background shape, use the square measurement unit located in the center of the ruler that corresponds with the side of the triangle which you are working with. We know that's three and a quarter. Multiply that measurement by two, which is six and a half. Then I'm reading their example, which is what I'm doing. Um, cut one for us six and a half inch square for the background piece and cut in half diagonally from corner to corner. All right, so let's do that first because it goes on and on and on. Um, so we're gonna use the green because I have a lot of that. And please, no, I'm just doing these for demos so I'm not being super, super accurate. It's okay, we'll get through it. All right, so those are my six and a half inch squares. Let's take two of them. It says to cut them di across the diagonal. And so to do that, I'm actually using the line, 45 degree line on my big ruler and I'm lining it up on the edge of the square and then the edge of the ruler from point to point. So I have that and that, and then I got that. All right, let's see here. Place the two triangles right sides together. Well, they are, because I cut two at a time. Place the ruler over the top as shown and cut through both triangles of the fabric along one angled edge of the ruler to create the right and the left background. Okay, so we've got that shape like that. We're gonna do one at a time here. Take your ruler, that's like that. 
Is this what it's telling me to do? Well, let's try it. It's telling me to do that and cut this, but I can't cut that that way so, because I'm a righty. So let's lay this on here like this. Just to cut that, this they say discard, and that gives me, voila, we did it. Turn the triangle this way, place this on, and I'm assuming because of what we're working on, oh, that's what I, oh no, that's, that doesn't go all the way to the end. We're going to place two triangles right side together. Place them all over the top as shown. So they're just saying just do this. They're not saying to align it with anything. So they're just saying that that point goes there. They do have the diagonal line going through the middle. But it's not aligning on the white dotted line. Well, let's try it. And then they're saying cut this side off. But again, I don't see why it would matter. So let's cut that off. Alright, so that was not as easy as it sounds. Cut through both triangles of the fabric along one angled edge of the ruler to create a life left and right background, which I've done. Alright, now, kaleidoscope block. The block, kaleidoscope block requires eight triangles, which we've already cut, and four small triangles. Several results are possible with different fabric selections. The eight triangles from the same fabric, eight different fabrics of the same value, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on. It tells you just different design ways you can use it. Um, let's see here. <sighs> refer to the triangle cutting instruction to cut the eight triangles for the blocks. We've done that. To cut the corner triangles, refer to the corresponding number located in the center of the ruler again. The first number is the length of the triangle. We got that. Second number is the size square necessary for the small corners. So three and a quarter. Cut two squares that size and cut and craft and diagonally from corner to corner to create your four corner squares. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of white for this and then just cut across the diagonal. And these are going to be our kaleidoscope corners. So they're saying to pick these, to stack these up like this, and you see how I'm doing it. This to here, this to here, this to here. This isn't in the directions, this is just me being smart, hopefully, and this to here. Now, I'm gonna sew this along here, and this one goes along here, and this goes along here. Oh, look at that, they match, they should all match. All right, so we're gonna go sew those all together. And then press the seams to one side. Okay, so they're saying press the seams to one side and sew the sets again to join the units. When I was making the kaleidoscope blocks on the other ruler, I found these laid flatter if you press the seams open. Totally your choice, but I will be pressing these open. So let me go sew these together and then I will be right back. So I do want to show you how I press my seams open. I use a strip stick, which I will link below. Um, there's long ones and a short one. We sell two sizes. Um, but what you do is you lay your piece on with their seam and it'll stand up. If you hold your finger here, it'll stay standing up. And you take the, the tip of your iron right here and you just go right across. And you can see even finger pressing, the radius of the wood will help it lay flat. And that is what you get super slick, super easy, and that's how I press all my seams open. All right, so I've got all of these sewn. So how'd I do? All right, so then you're gonna sew those two together and those together and then that to that. So let me go do that. All right, so I have my corners sewn on. So to square this up, we're going to take a six and a half inch square ruler. We're gonna put the center of the ruler on the center of my kaleidoscope and just trim up these outer triangles and if needed, the bias edges of the triangle. And again, turn it, rotate it. If you have a turntable, I have a Martelli turntable I love, but you see I don't have it out. 
When I'm doing these demos, like when I go to do the quilt, I will pull it out for sure. But when I'm doing these little demos, I don't usually pull it out. So there's the first one. You can still see where it's kind of kind of bowing out a little bit. Like if I do it that way, you can see, yeah, you can see it, it kind of looks like a parachute. This is the one where it was pressed all to one side, um, not to keep harping on that. And this is the other one where I pressed all the seams open. And again, I learned that by doing it with the other ruler. I pressed one with the seams to one side and then I actually took it apart, redid it and pressed it open and it sure looked a lot better and laid a lot flatter. So before I used the strip stick, I hated pressing seams open. Every time someone would say it, I'd kind of groan. But with that tool that, and it's only a, like I think an eight or $10 tool, it sure has made my life a lot easier. So there are the kaleidoscope blocks. Um, that's gonna drive me nuts. So let's put those aside. That's, that's one block. All right, so I have now cut stacks of everything. So let's lay out what we're going to make. So you're gonna make four of these. One, two, three, four. So everything I just said about how to do these was wrong and it was late and so I stepped away and went to bed and knew that it was wrong so I tore these all apart and now we're gonna start fresh again. Now again, I showed you the block was made like this. But what I discovered, <laughs> because I'm a little slow sometimes, is that this and this are the same. So we really need to make eight units, I think it is, eight like this, eight units like this. So I'm gonna go back to the directions and read them again. But what kicked me off that I knew I was wrong is this part here is not even, that's what I was trying to make even, this part's even. So I'm gonna go ahead and remark these the way they said and try it again and this time we're going to be aligning up here and I think I understand what they're looking for now. So, oops, this goes this way. There we go. All right, so I'm getting the pieces ready to try to do the four pointed star and see if I can figure out what my issue is with this quarter inch seam. Um, so this time I am being very, very careful about aligning and instead of a pin which can bend and warp the fabric, I'm using Wonder Clips to hold these together. Um, sometimes when things are being finicky, that's what you need to do is try a different way of adhering the pieces. Um, the other thing I did not do is draw my quarter inch line all the way to the edge so I can't see it. So quarter inch lines are lined because I will not be beaten by this. This is a finicky 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 block I will say that but um, again usually the ones that are finicky are worth making because uh, for one I'm gonna feel like super successful when I get this figured out but obviously this ruler works just fine for the kaleidoscope block which is what I was looking at it for um, but these these again they're all biased there's a lot of stretch a lot of play a lot of just me not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> so let's see where we go with this. And again, thankfully they did tell us how to mark these so we can kind of get a ballpark. Okay, so I've sewn all of these and I believe the orange should go right to the edge. So some of these I did get it all the way to the edge. Like that should match with the green, I think. Um, but this time what I did is I went ahead and I did a full formal press on these um, and then I'm going to remark them to do the yellow on the other side and then we'll see where we go from there. So um, a little slower process, a little more time consuming, but at the same point, um, this is super accurate. Oh, the other thing they said to do that I didn't do last time is they said to get rid of the dog ear right away before you do the second one. So let's do that. All right, so now that I've gone fussy and done exactly what they said, we are much closer to a quarter inch. We're still not 100% and I still think that's just me with my accuracy. And again, I'm just gonna get rid of those little dog ears like they say. See now this one, this one is way off. So I'm gonna pull that off and slide it down because I think 
this needs to come down more and I just wasn't as accurate on that one. Yeah, so this is an accuracy thing. Accuracy thing. Um, and this, no matter whether you were using the ruler or not, um, if you were sewing it by hand without cutting it with the ruler, let me tell you, I'd probably be even more off. Look at that one. That one's perfect. So it is a finicky block, but that's okay. Look at that. That one's on top. That one's on right on as well. So this first one, which I've done and gotten sewn together, this is all because I was rushing through and I wasn't really carefully marking and sewing slowly and pressing in between steps. And you can see the difference. So definitely um, take your time with these. That one I'm going to fix because the rest of these really are much better. That one's a little bit off. And <laughs> that one's borderline. I'm going to let it squeeze through. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and get these trimmed. We'll sew it and see how much better it comes out. Success. All right. So apparently taking your time, going slow, and following the directions. Every one of these, those points, well, that one's not quite perfect. But the rest of these are really perfect. So it is definitely a practice in patience kind of a thing. But now we have four of these guys done. Now this is how you make the four pointed star. So this goes like this, this goes like this, and this goes like this. Now at the beginning of the video, I said, hmm, I have no idea what this chart meant. I now got it. Because you have to have four of these to make a block, it tells you if you cut your triangle size, I cut them three and a half. Um, the spider web, which I assume is what they're calling this block, should measure four and seven, four and three quarters. Four blocks are necessary to form one spider web block. So this guy should measure four and three quarters. And <clears throat> we're a little bit bigger. Um, let's make sure on all of them. So I think that means I could square them up as long as I keep that in the center, but I don't know that for sure. And then it says kaleidoscope block for that would be six and three, six and a half. And this is the kaleidoscope block and it measured six and a half. So what it's telling you is if you cut the triangle size this size, your spider web units should measure this and your kaleidoscopes, if that's what you choose to make with the triangles, will measure this. So now that I understand that, that is super, super handy. So if I know I need to make, um, you know, a 12 inch finish, so this is 12 and a half inches, I need to cut my triangle six and a half um, to get to that 12 and a half kaleidoscope. Or if I needed to do a 12 and a half spider web, I would cut these triangles eight and a half. Oh, no, sorry. That's, that would be a, that would end up being a 24 inch block, which you may want to do, but because we need two of these, you need four of these to make a block, this would be six. So you have to cut them four and a half and you get six and a quarter, which gets you to 12 and a half. So I hope that it all makes sense. Now I understand what that chart is. Very, very handy. I figured it would be handy. They don't put charts in that aren't just took me to get into this part to understand it. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew these together. Um, but I am going to try to trim them up. I'm going to trim them up to four and three quarters. Again, I need to find the center point and make sure it's right there. And right now these are measuring, well, they're measuring five inches, like spot on. Yeah, I think you trim these up. It doesn't say to trim them up. Hmm. So let's try it. It's my block. If I screw it up, you guys can all go, yep, she screwed it up. So to cut, so I know these are five inch. I know they should be four and three quarters. So I'm actually going to first put this on the four and seven eighths, trim an eighth from that side and trim an eighth from the other side, making sure that this diagonal is going right through the center. If I'm not supposed to trim these up, somebody can leave me a comment below and say, mm, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but um, that's the one thing that I do love about a lot of the Creative Grid rulers is that you do they have you trim it up at the end and that gives you a nice clean unit. So I'm hoping, 
hoping this is what we're supposed to do. But we'll know when I sew it together if the points all match. And if they don't, then don't trim it up. Don't listen to me. This is part of learning how to use a ruler, and that's why we're just using scrap fabric. We're not really worrying about, um, you know, this going into a finished quilt. It's just a practice um, to kind of get the hang of everything. I can just see like somebody cringing, going, don't trim these, stop. But again, um, as long as you're consistent on taking it off from all four sides and keeping that center point center, we hopefully, no, yep, okay. So when you trim it up, you can make those uneven. I'm in for a penny, in for a pound, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish, but I would say do not trim it up based on what I just did. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna sew this together. I know it's not gonna be accurate because I've kind of screwed up these points. Um, had I left them alone, we probably would have been perfect. Um, but again, that is the other one. So I will do that and show you when I get it done at the end. But the last block in this thing is the spider web block. And you need two, four, six, you need eight of these funky polygons. And you need eight triangles which I happened to, I had to go cut a bunch more triangles. So yes, you didn't miss something. I realized to do all these demos, I didn't have enough triangles cut. So I did it off camera. So there's those and those. All right. So let's see, how do we do this? To make the, uh, to, to make the floating spider web block, use the large polygon background pieces and pieces in place of the kites. Okay, so this is now the floating spider web. I've sewed the polygon to the triangles, um, and this is going to be a two-tone um, spider web going around. Um, but I wanted to show you first how much excess is out here. Um, I'm assuming we're going to be trimming. And the other thing is when I did the same thing, I marked the lines just like we did above. I marked, uh, let me show you here, like this goes on here. So I did mark that quarter inch, that quarter inch, and I aligned the two quarter inch lines. So that was the same, just ignore this, just pretend it's part of a kite. But then um, when I pressed these, again, there was no real direction about pressing. I pressed these towards the triangle and these towards the polygon so that when we go to sew these together, they'll nest right there. Um, and again, this is just me with my own personal experience. I think that that's going to make this pop together easier. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these sewn and show you the next step. All right, so we have the floating spider web units done, I believe. Um, it's kind of cute, it looks like a flower. Um, but now I think it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't tell you to trim it. And I think what's going on is there's a lot, I mean, this has got so much information that I think sometimes when we're writing instructions and we're given this much space, certain things get weeded out. And I wish they had given us a little more direction on how to trim things up. But again, this chart here, I cut with three and a half. So the spider webs, these are four and three quarters. Um, I know they said you just sort of lay this on here and square these up even. And guess what? That's giving me... That's giving me a five and a half inch unit. So I'm gonna square these up and then I believe you turn this around. And again, because um, I sewed the floating star and even though I squared those up, it came out really nice, really, really nice. So I do think you have to trim them up to what the chart says. Um, I just think you have to be a little more precise and careful with it. Um, which is not normally the case with creative grid rulers. Usually there's something on the ruler that you just lay it on there and you, and you got it. And, you know, it's very user friendly. I think because of the complexity of these blocks um, and the ruler, there's a lot, you know, they expect you to have some basic quilting knowledge on how to deal with bias triangles. And so if you're uncomfortable with that, this may not be the first ruler to start with. Um, but I do have to say I'm getting some pretty impressive results. I'm very happy with what I'm getting, but it is a learning curve as you saw in this video. Hopefully I didn't edit out all of my mistakes. Um, 
So this goes together like this. So you'll have a spider web with background all the way around. As I just stop talking because I'm cutting. <laughs> so that is a that is a uh, pitfall to doing quilting videos is that when I'm thinking I have to stop or else guess what I'm gonna make a mistake. But yeah, so this is gonna be really really cute. Let me get this one trimmed and sewn, and I will go over all of the blocks with you here in just a second. All right, so here is the floating spider web. This is the last block from the. Um, four that they show us on the packaging. It was probably the easiest, but I think it was the easiest because I had learned so much building up to this block. Um, and I was super excited. I got my center there pretty accurate. Um, so let's go over what we've done with this one ruler. So this is the spider web ruler. Uh, we started with the kaleidoscope blocks. Uh, we did, I did two different ways. This one was pressing the seams in one direction. This was pressing the seams open. Um, and I ended up, this one kind of bowed a little more than this, so I'd recommend pressing them open. This ruler compared to the other kaleidoscope ruler, um, this ruler just does a lot more. Uh, again, I had talked a little bit about this bowing a little bit, and I think it was just me sewing and not being as accurate. This one came out flatter, but it is the exact same triangle, so there is absolutely no reason that this one and this one aren't interchangeable if you're doing a kaleidoscope block. This one will go on and do a dressed in plate block. Again, you can check out that video for what that looks like. But if you're a more advanced quilter and you wanna do a variety of different blocks, I would say the spider web ruler is for you. If you're more of a beginner or advanced beginner, then the kaleidoscope dressed in plate blocks were much, much more um, accessible and easier to learn out the gate. Um, this one has a learning curve, not the ruler itself, but the blocks you're making. So let's go on from there. So we did the kaleidoscope, very, very excited. Then we moved on to the uh, spider web block and the four pointed star. And you saw, I kind of struggled with that one. I think the instructions, I mean, they're, they're very good. And if you're more of a literal person, you probably would have picked it up faster than me. But I wish that this was accentuated a little more to actually show you how much of the kite sticks out from the triangle. And I wish that they would say that this chart here is a trimming chart. I don't know if that's actually what it should be or if I should not even have trimmed these but I did feel they needed to be trimmed to kind of square them up at the end to make them nice and neat. And my blocks were coming out at five or five and a half versus the four and three quarters they're telling me right here. So maybe if somebody's really, really familiar with this block and this ruler, they can tell me what I was doing wrong. But even by trimming these up, I did get successfully, um, this one here is your spider web block with the uh, triangles in the center. Um, again, my this one I was slapping together, I would say. I wasn't being super, super precise, but I still, I mean, that, that that's not perfect, but I could certainly live with this in a quilt and not be fretting over it. But then on the uh, floating scar, star one, I took much more time. I measured in, I lined everything, and I think that one came out flatter and neater and nicer. So again, it wasn't the ruler, it was the sewer my point sections are better. Now I did press, I pressed these towards the triangles, but then I did press all these other seams open. Um, I think it gives you a much flatter, nicer, less bulky block. So there's those. And then the last one we did was the floating spider web block. So a lot of information in this one ruler and a lot of blocks. Um, so one, two, three, four different blocks from the packaging. And again, they said they had more ideas on their website at creativegridsusa.com. Certainly check them out. That website is pretty robust. There's a lot of stuff there. But I hope you have enjoyed watching me learn how to use the spider web ruler from Creative Grids. Uh, I will link all of this below, um, the extra videos, the rulers, um, and I will also put the Creative Grids website down there for you as well. Um, and let me know in the comments below if you want to see more ruler uh, videos where I'm trying to figure these out. I've got lots and lots of rulers I have not used, and I would love to have a reason to pull them out. And if it's a video you guys want to see, that would be great. You can even tell me which ruler you're interested in seeing, and I can see if I can get that video done. Um, so as always, I want to thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the thumbs up down there. I appreciate it, and I really appreciate all of you and have a good day.